Good morning. Welcome to On the Porch, the Kevin Stoda channel. Hope you're having a good day. Um, I'm reviewing uh, some important and old articles from the uh, recent news. Um, the one I'm looking at today is No One Deserves to Die of COVID in Jail. Um, it's an editorial from uh, the KCK News, uh, the call, the call paper from early in May, and it goes like this. Uh, on March 28th, Patrick Jones became the first inmate in a federal prison known to have died of COVID-19. He was a worker at a prison textile factory at Oakdale Federal Corrections Complex in Louisiana where he was serving time for nonviolent drug offenses. By the third week of April, seven more inmates at Oakdale had died. Meanwhile, prison factories around the country have stayed open, subjecting inmates who work there to packed conditions even as the virus spreads. Social distancing in prisons is nearly impossible. The size of the inmate population in federal prisons exceeds their rated capacity by 12 to 19 percent according to a report this year from the Justice Department. No one deserves to die of COVID-19 in prison or jail, but more than 100 inmates already have. Now it's about 200, and thousands more could if prisons and elected officials do not take steps to protect incarcerated over the next few months, especially as the social distancing uh, rules are, are weakened. Um, a report from American Civil Liberties Union predicted that an explosion of cases in jails could cause the total death count in the United States to double. Uh, we've done pretty well. That hasn't been the case so far. Uh, but prisoners are suffering. They have, are in little tiny cells and they don't see each other. And if they do go out, it's only for an hour a day. Uh, two weeks ago, Cook County Jail in Chicago was the nation's top hotspot for coronavirus cases. Remember, and it was more than 230 inmates and 115 staff members had tested positive, even as the majority of inmates had not been tested. And later this week, uh, the Marion Correctional Institution in Ohio became the largest reported source of virus infection. There, 2011 inmates, about 80% of the prison's population, have tested positive and that could be a, uh, another prison soon. In addition, 154 members of the 350 person staff tested positive. In total, at least 2,400 inmates in Ohio's prison systems have tested positive. 10 have died in Ohio's Pickaway Correctional Institution, which houses minimum and medium security inmates. Infection hotspots uh, appearing in the prisons is not a fait accompli. The spread of the virus can be curbed if prisons send home eligible inmates. This has not happened to any great degree and we're three months on. Uh, they could be compassionate and send the elderly and very ill home. If ever there were a time to show compassion to vulnerability, nonviolent inmates, it is now. Patrol boards in states with indeterminate sentence also indeterminate sensing, sentencing also have the power to assess the limit or the list of inmates set to be paroled in the next six months and to consider releasing many of them as soon as possible. I know a 60 year old plus inmate in one Southeast uh, Missouri Correctional Institution. He's not up for parole till 2022 and uh, they haven't taken his case seriously for years. It'd be a good time for them to help, help him out. Shout out to uh, our friend, uh, Al Judy. Some states have already taken action to free inmates. Governor Jay Inslee of Washington this week commuted the sentence of 293 inmates whose releases were set to come within 60 days anyways. Well, I don't know if that's very much help, but it's a little help. In Washington, another 600 inmates are reportedly being considered for a rapid reentry program that would allow free inmates to reenter the community with electronic monitoring. Governors across the country should evaluate ways to use their clemency powers to save lives. Hmm. Releasing these, in, uh, these prisoners during this crisis is not just an act of mercy to protect prisoners' health and the health of the prison staff, 
Fewer sick inmates means less strain on the already burdened prison hospital system, which of course they're not paying enough for world uh, nationwide. Uh, a 2016 report from the Department of Justice found that uh, 17 of the medical positions in prison hospitals were unfilled and that 12 uh, Bureau of Prison Facilities were so understaffed that they were at crisis level. Releasing high-risk inmates will free up limited resources within the prison health system to better treat those who remain. Um, in a 2016 study from the Brennan Center for Justice, uh, it was found that there were no compelling public safety reasons to incarcerate 39% of the inmates in state and federal prisons. That would be about 576,000 people. Let's say it again. The study found that there was no compelling public safety reason to incarcerate 39% of the inmates currently in state and federal prisons. That's about 576,000 people. Elderly Americans are especially unlikely to commit further crimes uh, once released, statistics show. Uh, the United States Sentencing Commission found in 2017 that offenders over the age 65 had just a 13.4% chance of being rearrested in an eight-year period after release, compared to a 67% or 68% or for those under age 21. The report concluded that uh, recidivism measured by rearrest, reconviction, and reincarceration declined as age increased. There are more than 10,000 people over the age of 61 in federal prisons. I'll say that again, over 10,000 people over the age of 61 in federal prisons, including our friend Al Judy. Many elderly inmates have been in prison for decades after receiving long sentences in the tough on crime 1990s. Many would be good candidates for compassionate release now. If prisons are willing, unwilling to release some inmates outright, they could send eligible people into home confinement, at least for the duration of this crisis, if the pandemic arises uh, stronger again. Uh, Attorney General William Barr has the authority under Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act to expand the authority of the Bureau of Prisons to send people into home confinement. He has already ordered the Bureau of Prisons to make more inmates at federal facilities eligible for home confinement. Uh, prioritizing those at federal facilities with outbreaks of the coronavirus, such as those in Louisiana, Connecticut, and Ohio. State and local prisons should follow suit. Hey, shout out to Missouri. It's about time to uh, help people and remember that the uh, uh, prison system as we know it today is not functioning greatly. We've got too many people in incarcerated and too uh, few people uh, being reintegrated in society yearly. Um, our economy always needs people who are re ready to improve. And like uh, this article says, if you're getting to be an older inmate, uh, you're, you're not likely to commit a crime. And that's in an eight year period after getting up. Now you can consider, you know, the average uh, Louisiana politician or or Mitch McConnell or Donald Trump, how often you commit crimes, you know, that's pretty good to say that the, uh, compared to those aging people, the population leaving prisons is relatively low. Um, this editorial comes on a page uh, with another article. I want you to, federal trial opens over Florida's felon voting law. Okay. Uh, the people of the state voted to allow uh, federal, uh, those who serve their time in federal prisons to uh, be able to vote in uh, Florida. They, they voted quite resoundingly for it. But of course the state of Florida has made some rules and making it harder. Um, you know, many people have been, you know, happy to see that they could vote, but there are 774,000 felons across Florida's 67 counties, and still very few have been allowed to vote due to uh, laws about paying bills and, and other rules that make it harder for uh, felons to vote. So that's why people have had to take it again to the court. Um, here's, here's a story of a person who 
suffers in this condition. Her name is Miss Riddle. She was 17 when she was first convicted of violent assaults. Over the years, she spent five stints in prison, mostly for drug offenses. Her last stint was over 12 years ago. She said she can't afford to pay her outstanding debts, which she estimated to be at least 2,000. She's not even sure exactly how much she owes because records aren't easy to track. Yeah, it has to do with a bad economy, you know. People can't come up with $2,000 to pay off their debts after years of working. It, it says more about that than it does about uh, fairness and sentencing. Um, I don't know why we've had this system where the inmates pay everything, uh, all the costs and everything. It's, it's because the government's running things on the cheap and uh, the goal then began to incarcerate and fill prisons. And even private prison industries got in and, and it's just made a mess of things over the last 50 years. Um, I wrote an editorial uh, letter, a letter to the editor back in Wichita, uh, Kansas in 1990, January 1991. And I think it got me uh, eventually fired uh, or, or non-renewed at the school district I was teaching in, in Western Kansas, because I simply said there's too many uh, of these corporate prisons going up in Kansas. And then later I saw even more when I was in Texas. Um, there should not be any reason that a private company is making direct money uh, running our prisons. We should have our own system we should have a compassionate system, and we should have a safe system. And uh, if you can, do some retraining. Uh, it's okay to have some work in prisons, uh, but not necessarily uh, the way it's been run today. Uh, training and looking for good jobs is also, uh, how to look for jobs is also an important thing that people can be taught in prison. Now we're in an economic mess and they need more financial support than ever. Uh, running our prisons as a place to keep people when we don't know what to do with our economy is the worst way to run a country. So let's try to do better and uh, keep our prisons safe and reduce the number of prisoners and let some of these guys out. As it says, no one deserves to die in prison, all right, especially with COVID-19. Take care. Thanks for passing this on. What's your comments? Leave them there. This is the Kevin Stoddard Channel.